Hello everyone, I'm Wang Yuxin from Shandong University. The topic of this presentation is high-dimensional sparse cross-model hashing with fine-grained similarity in binding. Here is the outline. I'll give a brief introduction to the background first, then the proposed method with two subparts and the experiments finally the conclusion. Let's have some backgrounds. Nearest neighbor search, which tries to return the most similar instances for a given query, plays a fundamental role in many fields. However, with the explosive growth of multimedia data on the internet, it's nearly impossible to find the exact nearest neighbor within acceptable time and storage cost. So, with the balance between retrieval performance and efficiency, Hashing-based approximate near-neighbor search has attracted more and more attention recently. The advantages of hashing methods are obvious. They have fast query speed and low storage cost. Very recently, with biological observations on the fruit flies olfactory circuit, some studies have shown the high-dimensional sparse hashing. The flat circuit can be viewed as a hash function. It maps each simple into a higher dimensional Hamming space by a sparse binary mapping matrix. Then each simple is represented as a sparse binary hash code after a winner take all competition. Compared with traditional hashing methods, high dimensional sparse coding has two advantages. The first is strong representation capability. More expressions mean better preservation of similarity information and correspondingly better accuracy. Besides, the cost of calculating Hamming distance for sparse code is the same as a dense code. However, sparse coding has not been fully studied in hashing literature yet. For example, some methods optimize the sparse straight where L0 or L1 norm, which usually cause NP-hard optimization problems. In addition, some methods firstly generate a real-valued intermediate variable and then binarize it, resulting in large quantization errors. More importantly, non-existing sparse hashing methods are designed for cross-model retrieval tasks. From another point of view, the data information is usually underexplored in hashing literature. For example, the widely used binary pairwise similarity may lose a lot of fine-grained information. It treats a pair as similar if they share at least one common label. More importantly, the low-level feature similarity is less taken into consideration, which is extremely important for fine-grained retrieval. Nevertheless, simply fusing different levels of similarity may, inev may inevitably lead to conflicts between different levels due to the semantic gap problem. Meanwhile, a more fine-grained similarity also poses higher requirements on the representation ability of hash codes. Naturally, high-dimensional sparse coding could meet this demand properly. Thus, in this paper, we propose a high, novel high-dimensional sparse hashing method for supervised cross-model retrieval, which computes a fine-grained similarity matrix, then exploits the power of high-dimensional sparse coding to embed the fine-grained similarity into hash codes. Finally, it solves the optimization problem through an efficient and discrete algorithm. Now let's first introduce some notations. We use X to denote the feature matrix, L for the label matrix, and B for hash codes. Since our method uses high-dimensional sparse hash codes, the dimensionality of sparse codes is K, where actually R is the code length also is the number of non-zero elements. Now let's introduce the proposed method. We first compute a fine-grained similarity by fusing the similarity of two levels. We use cosine similarity of labels and the features to construct the high-level and the low-level similarity of date, respectively. The low-level feature similarity is calculated by all modalities. Besides, the high-level semantic similarity should always have a higher priority than the low-level feature similarity. Formally, for any three possibles, if the high-level similarity of one pair is larger than another one, 
their fused similarity should also satisfy this relationship. After some mathematical transformations, we can obtain a relation between the parameters A and B. Finally, we normalize the fused affinity matrix A that meets the bow two rules and define a fine grid similarity matrix S. According to the target of the retrieval tasks, hash codes should preserve the similarity of instances. That is to say, if points are similar, their binary code should be similar too. For this purpose, we adopt the inner product minimization formula. The first binary constraint on B restricts its elements to 0 or 1. The second sparse constraint makes its each column contain R1. This objective utilizes the strong representation cap capability of high dimensional sparse codes to preserve the fine grained similarity into the turbulent hash codes. Obviously, it can embed more thematic information and generate more fine grained hash codes, thus, leads to more fine grained retrieval results. However, the above problem is NP hard due to the binary and the sparse constraints. Moreover, the symmetric inner product of binary code is not able to reconstruct the subtle differences in the fine grained similarity. Therefore, we adopt an asymmetric strategy. We uh, replace 1B in the symmetric inner product with H. Uh, we also uh, introduce a regularization term between them and, and an orthogonal constraint on H. Uh, we can alternatively and uh, iteratively update H and B. Limited by time and not introduce more about the optimization. Please refer to our paper for more details. Uh, after getting the hash codes B, we further learn hash functions to map out of simple instances into the Hamming space. Uh, this problem can be regarded as a binary classification problem under the supervision of the learned hash codes, and many models can be adopted here. For simplicity, we train a linear regression model for each modality. W is the uh, mapping matrix. Then we have the hash function for auto simples. Sign R is a function that combines binarization and the specification. It is a kind of winner take all competition. To sum up, now we can learn the hash codes for database by equation 1 and uh, learn hash functions for queries by equation 2. For a given query during test, we could obtain its corresponding hash codes with equation 3 and then perform retrieval operations through calculating Hamming distance. Uh, now let's analyze the computation and the storage cost of HSCH. During the training phase, the complexity of HSCH is linear to the size of the training set, N, which is scalable to large-scale data size. During the retrieval procedure, the computational cost of generating a sparse code is slightly larger than a dense one. The cost of sparse codes used to calculate Hamming distance is the same as that of dense ones. For a large-scale database, the dimensionality of sparse codes K is much smaller than the size of the database N, thereby the cost of generating binary codes is negligible. The space cost of sparse codes is slightly larger than the dense one. Actually, large-scale storage areas are relatively cheaper than accuracy and query speed. That's all for the proposed methods. To demonstrate that it's effective, we compare it with several state-of-the-art methods, including four dense cross-model hashing methods. The experiments are conducted on three widely used data sites. We report the MAP results and the training efficiency. These are the MAP results of HSH and all baselines on three benchmarked data sites. We could find that HSH is superior to all baselines, including both the image to test and the test to image tasks, especially at the short code lens. This phenomenon indicates the powerful capability of high dimensional sparse codes in HSH. Even in scenarios where space cost is limited, HSH at 2 bits is competitive with other methods at 16 or 32 bits yet shorter code lengths cause cheaper Hamming distance computation. These are the precision recall curves of HSH and all lines on Flickr design. 
we could find that HSH substantially outperforms on the orbit lines in large gaps, which are consistent with the trends of MAP results. These are the top N precision curves on Flickr design. HSH also achieved it the best. As for the training efficiency, this table shows the training time and the retrieval time of HSH and orbit lines in unthreaded sites. We can see that HSH achieves comparable or better results than several baselines. With respect to the retrieval time, HSH reports similar results as those dense baselines, confirming the complexity analysis. Jointly considering the training and the retrieval time, we can conclude that HSH is efficient and scalable to large-scale data sites. We also compare HSH with several state-of-the-art deep cross-model hashing methods. From this table, we can see that HSH is superior to all deep baselines by a large gap. Although HSH is not an end-to-end -end deep model, it still achieved better performance, demonstrating the effectiveness of fine-grained similarity and the high-dimensional sparse codes. In conclusion, we proposed a novel high-dimensional sparse cross-model hashing method termed as HSH. It mainly focuses on how to fully exploit the information or data to seek fine-grained retrieval results and how to improve the representation capability of hash codes. Specifically, we first design a fine-grained similarity with two innovative rules. Then we explore the power of high-dimensional sparse codes to embed the fine-grained similarity into the turbulent hash codes. Finally, an efficient and discrete algorithm is proposed to solve the optimization problem. In future, we'll try to optimize our objective in a deep-to-deep -deep manner and test if the proposed still works on the unimodal retrieval task and the online scenario. That's all for my presentation. Thanks for your time. Any questions?